In this video, we will discuss the normal ordering of quantum operators for bosons as well as for fermions. In short, a set of quantum operators is in normal order or Wick order if all annihilation operators are to the right of all creation operators. So, for instance, those two expressions are normal ordered, whereas this one is not. There is also the concept of anti-normal order, which is the exact opposite of normal order. There are two ways to denote taking the normal order of some expression, either with an uppercase n or using two colons. As an example of this notation, we can write down the fact that normal ordering is an idempotent operation like this. Now, why is normal ordering interesting? If we take the vacuum expectation value of a normal ordered set of quantum operators, it will yield zero. This is because on the far right of the expression, we will have an annihilation operator, and on the far left, we will have a creation operator. In contrast, this is not true for ordinary functions, which are unaffected by the normal ordering prescription. Furthermore, normal ordering is an important ingredient in Wick's theorem, which states that the time-ordered product is equal to the normal-ordered product plus the sum of all possible contractions of operators. Wick's theorem deserves a video on its own, so let us now discuss in detail how to perform the normal ordering of quantum operators. This is actually very simple. We pretend that all anti-commutators are zero and switch the operators around until all a's are on the right and all a daggers are on the left. To see this in action, let us look at bosons and fermions separately. For bosonic quantum fields, the creation and annihilation operators fulfill the following set of commutator relations, where the last one might look different due to a different normalization. The first commutator tells us that we can always exchange one A with another A. The second one tells us that we can always exchange one A dagger with another A dagger. And the last one tells us that if we want to exchange an A with an A dagger, we have to include the commutator term. The important thing here is that inside a normal order product, we ignore this term. These are some examples of normal order products. You can try them yourselves, and if you're ready, here are the solutions. Before we go on to fermions, let's talk about a possible paradox using the normal order. By calculating the normal order of a a dagger in two different ways, we get two contradicting results. One way of resolving this is to claim that normal ordering is no linear operation, so we cannot separate the normal order of a sum into the sum of a normal order. But this is not the case. In fact, we must not use canonical commutator relations inside a normal order. We mentioned this at the beginning of the video. Pretend that all anti-commutators are zero. So the normal order of a a dagger is the same as the normal order of a dagger a or equivalently, the normal order of their commutator is zero. In summary, normal ordering is a linear operation if C1 and C2 are complex numbers, and O1 and O2 belong to the so-called free algebra, that is, the algebra where all anti-commutators are zero. This is equivalent to saying, don't use canonical commutator relations inside a normal order product. Now let's discuss the normal ordering of fermionic operators. Here, the creation and annihilation operators fulfill these anti-commutator relations. The first two tell us that we can always exchange two b's or two b daggers when we include a minus sign. And the third tells us that when we want to exchange a b with a b dagger, we have to include a minus sign as well as the canonical anti-commutator. And similar to the bosonic case, we ignore this term inside a normal order product. Here are some examples for the normal order product of fermionic operators. You can try to solve them yourselves, and if you're finished, these are the solutions. Let's look at the last example. Here we can see again that even though we're dealing with 1b and 1b dagger, we ignore the canonical anti-commutator relation inside the normal order product, but we have to include it outside the normal order product. And that's pretty much it for this video. Thanks for watching.